Good evening everyone. Hopefully you're okay. <clears throat> Today I'm coming a bit later, but I'm here. Um, hopefully you watch this. If you're not outside celebrating the Queen's Jubilee, if you are, you watch it much, much later. Whatever you are, I'm hoping you're having a good day. You had a wonderful day. We had another brilliant sunny day that we should be very thankful. It's not often nowadays. Um, and um, yeah, it's a wonderful four days of celebration. I'm hoping you guys are going to have a wonderful rest. Those of you are <coughs> off work, let's begin. Thursday, the 2nd of June. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Hallelujah. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. To you be glory and praise forever. Raised to your right hand on high and ascended Christ shows the Prince of Love and bestows on us the gifts of grace. As your spirit renews the face of the earth, may we bring forth the fruit of the Spirit and reveal your glory in all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We start with Psalm 139. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Okay. O Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journey and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O oh Lord, know, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot it. <clears throat> where can I go then from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence if I climb up to heaven you are there if I make the grave my bed you are there also if I take uh, the wings of, of the morning and dwell into uttermost parts of the sea even there your hand shall lead me your right hand hold hand holds me fast if i say surely darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night even darkness is no darkness with you amen in the night is as clear as the day darkness is light to you are both darkness and light to you are both alike for you yourself created my innermost parts you knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, my soul knows well. My, fa my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished, already in your book were all my member, members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when, at yet, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels for me, O oh God? How great is the sum of them? If I count them, they are more in number than the sand. And at the end, I am still in your presence. <coughs> Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God, that the bloodthirsty might, be depart, might depart from me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O oh Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies also. Search me out, O oh God, and know my heart. That's a bold statement. How, how bold do you have to be to say, search me out and know my heart? He knows your heart anyway. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Interesting. To say, search me out, O God, and know my heart. Creator God, may every breath we take be your glory. May every footstep show you as a, show you as a way that trusting in your pr presence in this world, we may be we may be on this life still be with you where you are alive and reign forever <coughs> amen glory to the father to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning as now and shall be forever wonderful psalm wonderful we're gonna read some reflection psalm 139 but now that you have come to know god or rather to be known by god in the New Testament letter to the Galatians, in Galatians 4, 9, Paul seems almost to correct himself, mid-thought, as saying, as if saying, but now that you Galatians have come to know God, no way, the deeper truth is that God has come to you. The blessed reality of being known by God is the sustained theme of Psalm 139. We're truly known by God. Do you know God? Do you know God? Knowing God is a true and useful category for understanding your Christian experience. It is one, it, it is one, the Bible itself, repeatedly, the purpose of life, after all, is that we may know Him who is true. But our own human capacity, capacities do not exhaust what it means to be a child of God. Such knowledge <coughs> is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. The broader, deeper uh, wraparound category of life as the people of God is that we know we are known by Him. Not only now in our present, but way back when we were being formed in the womb. He, know, he knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. God knew us even then, and He knows our future as well, every single day until we, we die, and even after, He knows everything about us. Do you feel alone? Unknown? Do you feel forgotten? Do you feel neglected? Sidelined? Marginalized? Silenced? Remember who you are. If you are in Christ, the deepest reality of your existence is that God knows you. He knows every nook and cranny of your heart. He knows every failure and every fear, because we all have them. He understands you. He does not merely know about you. He knows you. He, he hasn't heard about you. He knows you inside and out. He has pressed you in the inner he says of his heart, forgiveness, for forgiven and adopted into his family by grace. You are loved by the Lord Jesus Christ with the very love with which the Father loves him. Amen. What a wonderful message. A wonderful message. Our next reading comes from Deuteronomy. It's quite long. Old Testament reading comes from Deuteronomy 32. 15 to 47. Jacob ate his fill. Jeshurun grew fat and kicked and kicked. You grew fat, bloated, and gorged. He abandoned God who made him and scoffed at the rock of his salvation. They made him jealous with strange gods, with abhorrent things. They provoked him 
they sacrificed to demons, not God. To, to deities they had never known. To, uh, to new one recently arrived, whom your ancestors had not feared. You were un unmindful on the rock that bothered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. Excuse me. The Lord saw it and was jealous. He sprung his sons and daughters. He said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what the end will be, for they are perverse generation, children in whom there is no faithfulness. They made me jealous with what is no God provoked me with their idols, so I will make them jealous with what is no people. Provoke them with a foolish nation, for a fire is kindled by my anger and burns to the depths of Sheol. It devours the earth and its increase and sets on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap disasters upon them, spend my arrows against them, wasting hunger, burning consumption, bitter pestilence, the teeth of beasts I will send against them with venom of things crawling in the dust. In the streets the sword shall be reaped and in the chambers terror for young men and women alike nursing child all gray head i thought not scatter them and blot out the memory of them from humankind but i fear provocation by the by the enemy for they adversaries my misunderstand and say our hand is triumphant it was not the lord who did all this he's saying they forgot about him they forgot about him they were following the idols this is recurring theme here in uh, deuteronomy and they followed other gods and the idols and he had enough um, he is a jealous God. He had enough. And he, sa he said, I will destroy all of you. I would I like to destroy all of you, young, old, men, women, uh, kids, old people, all, everybody. I will destroy you. But the only thing basically stopping me here is because your enemies, my enemies, your enemies will think that they did this. They won. Um, they, 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 they might misunderstand and say, oh, this is our triumph, or, uh, triumph, it's not God's doing. They are a nation void of sense. There is no understanding in them. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern what the end would be. How could one have ro uh, rooted a thousand and two put a, a mirror in, fl in flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had given them up. So, so basically, how could you guys win anything? How can, can one uh, go against thousand and ten thousand and win unless God is behind you and helping you? But even them, they're so unwise that they don't even get it. That the only reason you guys are winning is because I'm behind you. Indeed, their rock is not like our rock. Our enemies are fools. Their vine comes from the vine stock of Sodom, from the vineyard of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of poison. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of serpents and cruel venom wow, of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me, sealed up in my uh, up my, in my treasures, vengeance is mine, and there are recompense for the time when their foot shall sleep, because the day of the calamity is uh, at hand, their doom comes swiftly. Indeed, the Lord will vindicate his people, have compassion on his servants, when he sees that their power is gone, neither bond nor free, remaining then, the remaining then he will say where are the gods the rock in which they took refuge who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their li uh, libations sorry libations let them rise up and help you let them be your protection see now that i even even i am he 
there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And no one can deliver from my hand, for I lift up my hand to heaven. I swear, as I live forever, when I oh, when I wet my flashing sword and my hand takes hold of judgment on judgment, I will take vengeance to my adversaries and will repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives from the long-haired enemy long-haired enemy okay praise the heavens his people worship him all you gods for he will avenge the blood of his children and take vengeance on his adversaries. it will repay those who hate him and quit cleanse the land for his people Moses came and recited all the words of this song in the hearing of the people he and Joshua son of Nun when Moses had finished reciting all uh, these words to all Israel he said to them take to heart all the words that I'm giving in witness against you today give them as a command to your children again this is I'm telling you but you your responsibility to tell your children so that they may diligently diligently observe all the words of this law this is no tri uh, trifling matter for you but rather your very life through through it you may live long in the land that you're crossing over the Jordan to possess interesting very interesting wonderful it's a long reading Deuteronomy we see this is recurring he's telling them Moses is giving them all these warnings and he's saying yes uh, I'm telling you but you have to tell your children and grandchildren is your responsibility don't choose sin don't choose to serve other gods basically don't don't choose uh, having idols we talked about this idol could be anything in your life which comes the place of God takes the place of God what make us choose sin we can ask what maybe people don't understand the full effects of sin um, the sin that the sin has on your life the full effects of it to begin with you may enjoy it it seems harmful we could we could talk about anything really it, it seems harmful it seems fun but then it takes over before you know it it takes over grows it takes over your life when we reject God because of an idol this is a sin that's what he's saying don't reject God because of an idol because of following chasing after pleasing people uh, forgetting your morals forgetting doing what is right because you need to please people because you're chasing money because you are chasing fame could be anything it could be literally idols in your home like actually other gods in your home anything could be idol but anything more important than spending time and being close to God is harmful those people in the text forgot about God and went to worship idols as they were very well off they were very well off he says you had everything you have a lot of things but and then you you forget you it's like oh everything is going great i have everything i need and you don't feel the need to spend lots of time with god then you, you remember about god when you're in the need they were prosperous in every way suddenly forgot the one who gave them everything and life they were responsible for their attitude the same way that all of us are responsible so they were giving their time to other things they were wasting their time and their effort on other things instead of, their, of serving God um, and Moses spoke to all to all of them people the whole of Israel and once again asked them to to talk to their kids and make sure that they, they teach them so we need to be focused on him thankful for everything we have in our lives all good things come from God it's come from nowhere else if anything comes from somewhere else it may seem good but it's it's not it's just 
it's just a lie. And all the good things come from God. It come from God. Sometimes it, it, it's difficult. Sometimes He's testing us. Sometimes we, it seems like it's really hard. But even things that are hard and it seems bad, God turns into our advantage. Uh, sometimes it just needs a bit of a uh, patience. People are, seeing, people are increasingly more self-reliant, self-indulgent and self-sufficient and can easily get confused into thinking they can do all things alone. It's not true. The reason that you are alive today and breathing is because of God's mercy and plan for you. Happiness in your life comes from God. Your family and friends come from God. Your job comes from God. <laughs> Everything comes from God and Moses is reminding us them and us once again to stay focused on him and also to teach our children to follow God, which sometimes is not that easy. But as long as we talk to them, make space, make space in our lives, we are very busy. We are all very busy with so many things. But we are, it's our responsibility, the word says it in many, many places, it's our responsibility to make time to talk to our children and teach our children. Because if we don't talk to our children, but God, somebody else will talk to them about the ungodly things. That's how it goes. All right, long reading. Like I said, it took a long time. We're going to go to the second reading. First John 4, 1 to 6. It's a short one. First John 4, 1 to 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, of which you have heard that this is coming, and now it is already in the world. Little children, you are from God, and have conquered them. For the one who is in you, gathers, gather, God, <laughs> greater, is greater than the one who is in the world. Yes, the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. Yeah, I love the way he's uh, calling us little children. That's how God sees us. We are his little children. They are from the world. Therefore, what they say is from the world. And the, uh, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. And whoever is not from God does not listen to us. From this we know that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error wonderful basically it tells us that we are able and should be willing to test the spirits or false teachers or false people so when you have somebody in front of you they're talking to you doesn't matter that whether it's a teacher preacher something you see on tv somebody just could be your friend talking always discern and test what they're saying does it go um, with the word of god does it sound like something that's coming from God or something that is not. Anyone who does not preach Jesus, Jesus is the only way, yes? He's not from God. The focus should be on Jesus and his sacrifice. We need to be wise and discern what, it, what is what, yes? We need to ask for wisdom from God and we need to grow in knowledge and understand relating to the word of God, which brings us closer to God. We shall neither and no take away from also we, sh we should not add anything to the word of God or take away anything from the word of God. We are, uh, we are to preach the whole word of God and be uh, excited, <laughs> hopefully doing it. We preach the whole word of God. We test everything in the word of God. Um, basically if, it, if it's <laughs> if it's not there, basically if it's not there, don't preach it if it's your own opinion i mean it's 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 a huge responsibility it's a huge responsibility talking and preaching you, you, 
it's not just for preachers and teachers it's, it's for everybody it's it's you when you're talking all of us when we are talking to friends um and family could be you could be talking to somebody on the way home in the bus and it's a huge responsibility what you're telling them you have to tell them the truth and nothing but the truth and you know the whole truth not half the truth uh so and above all if somebody is talking to you and you're not sure i have lots of moments when somebody is talking to me i'm not sure whether this is what is what and there's subjects and very difficult subjects and things that you think oh, i'm not sure what to think about this ask for wisdom from god not people just pray about it it may take days it may take weeks discern discern and ask for wisdom from god okay how excellent is your name in all the words you have set your glory above the heavens hallelujah my soul proclaims the greatness of the of the lord this is magnificat sorry they are just saying magnificat my soul proclaims the greatness of the, of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has, gone great, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their, in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of, of servant Israel to remember his promise <coughs> on mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and children, his children forever. I mean, glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The collect for today is, O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Savior Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for another day that you've given all of us. Thank you for the wonders of this world. Thank you for the beauty of this world. Thank you for giving us this life and this chance to enjoy our lives and the people around us. Give us wisdom, how to discern your word, Jesus, whatever we read, whatever we hear, not to just believe everything we hear all the time on um, the news or anywhere else, um, or reading the word. We need to discern with your spirit. We need to look for the truth. We need to discern. Give us this wisdom to discern and help us to be following you, Jesus, um, and not the things from this world. doesn't matter when we are struggling or when we are very, very well off and everything is going well. We need to be giving our, our time and, and we need to be communi communicating with you all the time. Help us to take this decision to be closer to you, Jesus, to have our prayer time, prayer corner, prayer room, prayer, just just place and, and where we're going to be there with you, spending time with you. Help us to, to be committed to do this every day, every day, to have a little time with you because God we're spending so much time with everything else in our lives um, doing doing great and important things but also <laughs> not so great things sometimes we just sit and waste time on Facebook or 
or, or, or TV or things. And God, this is a precious time that we can spend with you because we need to realize, give us wisdom to realize that all of our problems or everything we're going through uh, is solved by no one else but you, God. You're the source of life and wisdom. You're the only person we need to be talking to, not <laughs> even people. Um, sometimes we just talk to people all the time. We just keep talking about our problems and things we're going through. But God, they, they can't really do anything about it. They can't really help us. You are the only, the only person who can help us. You are the almighty God who is there for us and he you enjoy you and you enjoy talking to us you enjoy talking to us who are little your little children you you are like a caring parent who loves us so much you want this you're waiting for us to decide and find time for you to find time for you so help us now give this passion and this willingness and wanting and desire in our hearts to 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 make this time and space in a prayer room for you God where we're gonna be there even if it's five minutes a day we're gonna be there talking to you about whatever we need to talk and pray and I believe this is gonna be life-changing for all of us bless us God and bless our families and and um, give us healing and wisdom we pray for our church we pray for our nation and the whole world the whole world who is in need and the wars around the world and all these people dying we God protect them protect those children and and women and men who are in a terrible situation right now we are praying for a queen, bless this lovely lady who is celebrating 70, 70 years on the throne. This is such a difficult job. She didn't have, she did not have an easy life, God. It's, it's a heavy crown she's carrying around. And she, the only way she, she was able to do this is by your help. We pray for her, for blessing and health. We pray for her family. Give them wisdom of how to look after their nation. Give them protection and, and help. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's say our, our Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the Spirit of God kindle us in the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. You're probably hearing my kids shouting. I'm really sorry. They've been doing this all day long. Yeah. yeah.
bless you everyone god bless us in the name of the father son and the holy spirit see you guys soon bye